buck. We just saw a couple cows over there. Um, they like to come down here for the cover. So, we're just gonna cruise around here until maybe we see some or get up to a vantage point, do some glassing probably. So, and we'll see what we can, what we can come up with. As we make our way through this mountainous area at Richard Holmes Safari, we see lots of different animals, including these red hardy beast. There's been a lot of water lately, and so all the creeks, which often run dry, have water in them. I'm just amazed to see ostrich just out in the wild. I'll never get over it. We have several creek crossings to go through. There's some amazing wildebeest up on the hill. We walk from here. So we're gonna do a uh, sort of a game drive. So we're gonna walk this way. We've got a couple guys who are gonna station themselves over here. And they're gonna walk through some of these areas and see what they can push towards us and if anything comes through then we'll get in position and see what we can get so we saw a bunch of um, gemsbok down there so uh, we're gonna try and have one of those to get those guys push them towards us hopefully they come this way so we're gonna go down here and see As we make our way to our hunting spot, we see animals right off the bat. There's a spring bok off in the distance, no surprise there. We make our way to this prominent tree. As we approach, I make sure to check out the branches to make sure there are no snakes there waiting for me. Our plan is to sit within the shade of this tree and wait for game to approach. So we're sitting here and like an idiot, I just dumped my gun barrel in the dirt. So I have to do a quick cleanup job. Also, our two guys we've got out here trying to push the game to us. Um, they drove over there in their truck and it actually got stuck. So um, they're sitting over there stuck and we're sitting over here. So uh, hopefully everything works out. We don't have to wait very long and a fantastic herd of zebra arrives. We weren't looking for the zebra, but here they were. They don't seem to see us at all, and so we get a chance to watch them as they mosey on through the grassland. It's pretty awesome to see how their stripes seem to shimmer in the distance. Not long after the zebra departs, a herd of gemsbuck moves in. We see him sneaking towards us like a bunch of ghosts, barely noticeable in the grass at first. Hopefully they won't notice us either. As we sit there, we wait for an opportunity to find a gemsbok in the middle of this herd. The difficulty here is that all of the gemsbok have horns and they like to clump up together. So singling one out proves to be a little challenging. Soon they move into range and I'll get my opportunity.
just behind the bush. The guide finds one that's appropriate for us to shoot and tries to describe to me where it is. He counts out. Somehow I get confused and I'm not quite sure which one he's referring to. In the front is number three. I think that he's talking about this one that's made its way to the front of the herd. However, he was actually talking about one that was six animals back. Okay. He's number six from the front. Number six from the front. He's number six from the front. Wait. It doesn't help much that they keep shifting and moving positions. in the middle of that bull. I get one last opportunity, but now they're about 450 yards away. And so I'm a little bit leery to go ahead and take a shot. The last one. One to the left. I think better of it and decide not to at this point. I'll wait for a better opportunity. Almost. That's okay. Go get in the plan. That's frustrating. Let's go. Alright guys. Well, that could have gone a little bit better, but just um just difficult to uh find which one so there's one with a wonky antler or wonky horn rather i would have taken that one but uh um yeah it was a difficult call so they just walked out of our lives and over the next ridge but uh we're heading over here we've got looks like i don't know about a half a mile to walk to get to the truck that's stuck and uh hopefully they'll have it fixed by the time we get there otherwise we'll be pushing so but this is a great experience africa is awesome yeah no it's it's good to see like i told my dad that they're not all that easy like the spring buck it's like not super hard it's just fun the black wildebeest a little more challenging and then the gems box they just seem to they seem to always want to bunch together in groups and they're really spooky now at this point, our guide has gone on ahead to see if he can help the other guys with the truck. So we get an opportunity to go through this great looking African countryside. We occasionally catch a glimpse of an animal looking at us through the bushes. We make our way over a creek and pass a whole bunch of acacia trees. What a great morning to be out and about. We run into this guy, who's an African dung beetle. We're amazed at his efforts to roll this poop. Great job, little poop rolling bug. You hear him? No. You? I heard a truck in here. <laughs> We're pretty sure we hear the truck off funny. in the distance struggling to get out of a mud pit. Okay guys, well, our, the truck got stuck and the guide went off to see about the truck. We had a little bit back and we, and we went after the guide. After we couldn't see him, we have now lost the guide and are wandering through this guy's property in Africa, which is pretty awesome, not gonna lie. <laughs> What's one good hunting trip without meandering through some forest? <laughs> so it's so cool, the acacia trees 
These big spiky ones are crazy. We're all nervous to step on these rocks. They have cobras here. And, the, puff, but, adders. and puff adders, the one they're all really scared of are puff adders, which make this noise if you step on them. And why they're scary is they won't run away while you, <laughs> while if you step close, while the cobra is supposed to run away. There's a third one called the boom slang, which sounds like something out of a kid's book, but it's a real thing. <laughs> and it stays in the trees. But supposedly the one, the its fangs are pretty far back into its mouth, so it's hard to get bit by. So essentially the one everybody's scared of really bad is the puff adder. So we're gonna go see if we can find the guys in the truck. Enjoy a nice little nature walk out in the middle of Africa. Oh, it should be great. What a crazy memory. So awesome. You hear him? Okay. All right. Well, we've made it through the wilds of Africa. We see our truck up there. Yeah, wilds of Africa. It was probably like a mile <laughs> walk. It was a little dicey though, not gonna lie. They freaked us out with snakes. And then uh, walking by yourselves. But at the same time, that was awesome. I've been a few times and I thought going to hike through this would be so cool. And we did, we hiked through a river, we saw the acacia trees, we even scared up a jackrabbit, scared the crap out of us. <laughs> we saw a dung beetle, woo! Saw a dung beetle. <laughs> it's crazy, it smells like animals here. It smells, they've yeah. been, but which makes sense, I mean, there's animals all over the place, but still. Well, we're gonna go up there and see if we can give them a hand. Yep, trucked about 400 yards that way. Nice. All right, guys, so we made it back to the truck. And when they said it was stuck, they meant it was really, really stuck. <laughs> um, as you guys can see, the, the mud is right up. It's probably like only like six inches underneath the truck. And those wheels are buried super deep. So what, the, what we're gonna do is they've, they've sent for a tractor or another truck that's gonna come pull us out. <laughs> it's about 10 o'clock in the afternoon. It's super beautiful. All the places to get stuck, it's super good. It's, Everything's nice clear skies. We can look back over here at the at the spot where you just really saw the Gemsbuck and the zebra and look at all the acacia bushes and it's just it's a nice relaxing way to, to spend the middle of the day. <laughs> so we're gonna wait here while they send for another truck. Hopefully it gets here soon. And then we'll get back after it and see if we can get that at Gemsbuck and then afterwards me. So Pretty awesome, definitely adds to the adventure. It's a good story. Like, it's impressive how stuck this truck is. <laughs> so, yeah, it's pretty so, good. So, our guides say that as long as you stay in the tracks, like, because they drive on these, these roads every day, just looking at animals and fixing fences. So, if you drive on the same, they drive on the same tracks, and if you drive on the same tracks, no matter how wet it is, you won't sink. But if you move just off to the side of the road, they're just off the tracks you sink and that's what happened it's it's been raining a lot we're in the rainy season right now and in like february like mid-february and so yeah <laughs> yeah they probably went like a foot maybe off the side of the track and now it's super sunk so it's crazy it's definitely a good story and we'll sit here and wait and hopefully maybe we'll see some game off in the distance and we'll call it good Hopefully we get out soon and get back to hunting Gumsbuck. When we find the truck, it turns out to be good and stuck. I feel kind of guilty because these guys were just trying to take us around even though the roads were a little bit muddy this morning. Okay guys, so the guy with the tractor's not coming. Uh, they don't know if he got lost or what, but they can't really contact him. <laughs> so what we're gonna be doing is we are going to be getting rocks like this, and like this flatter rocks in this riverbed right here. 
and we are going to be putting it underneath the tires and digging out a little bit of mud and then jacking it up and putting more rocks in the tires so we can get some grip to get out but it's pretty fun so we're gonna um, do that and hopefully be able to get out and get back to hunting gems buck and see if we can find any so hopefully i'll get some footage of that for you guys yeah a little bit we so all make an effort to try and get right the truck there. out of the mud in spite of everyone's good efforts, it seems like we don't make much progress. The truck is truly good and stuck. At last, the tractor shows up. Part of the problem is that we are about six miles away from any developed dirt road. Our guides hook up the tow rope and do their best to tow the truck out of the mud. However, the tow cable doesn't hold and it just snaps the connection point. The decision is made to try and t take the tractor around the back of the truck and hook to the tow hitch to pull the truck out. However, as we take the tractor around, it gets stuck in the mud also. Eventually, they will get these two vehicles out of the mud. However, it's going to be about a week after we leave Africa. I really have to give credit to these guys. They really did try their best and they put forth the best effort they could in the hot sun that day. We were there for a couple of hours while they were trying to get everything unstuck for us. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's just how it goes sometimes with hunting. Thanks for tuning in and watching. Tune in next time, maybe we'll actually get one. In the meantime, James would like to leave you these words from one of our favorite drinks we discovered in Africa. We're not actually sponsored by them. South Africa sun, got you down. No worries. Entergate. Is your solution to your problem? It comes in many different flavors. There's a red one and an orange one. I bet they have blue ones, but you never know. It's pretty good. This one's an Artije flavor drink, so it's pretty good. So the real question is for you, Energate. Do you have the ability to sponsor Kerr Outdoor? Energate. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe.